Ruth, oh, of course. Because some of people course. don't, you know, we have a generation up here that don't know about Grandpa Seacrest oh, or see. Grandma anymore. I, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. Oh, um, yeah. My dad mm -hmm. used to play cards with Gus oh. all the time that we were up here. Okay. And they'd, they'd get the guy, whatever other people were up here, it might have been Havel's Roods, I can't remember all the names, but they had card night. And mm -hmm. Gus and my dad and whoever else, and they they go to somebody's cabin. Okay, might have okay. even been Gus's cabin. Could be. Could I think be. they rotated too. Yeah, I think they did. I think they did. I think they rotated, and the women would make a dessert for them when they came. Could, Grandma would make could something. Be, could yeah. be. Yeah. Yeah. So I I remember Gus and Ruth so well because they were mm. always here when I was little and came okay. up for all those years. So how did your dad come up here? How did he start? You know, you asked me that before, mm -hmm. and I even asked your mom, Marilyn, I I don't know what my dad and mom's connection was. Okay. How they ever found out about this place. I, okay. They must have known somebody else. That knew about it. That knew about it, but because I was so little, mm -hmm. I, I didn't know, and then when my parents died and I never asked them. Yeah. Like, how in the world did you discover this wonderful yeah, resort? Yeah, yeah. Isn't that something? So then, from, from the first year we came, and I had to be, I think, maybe maybe six years old. Okay. Five or six. Um, I came every single summer. Okay. <laughs> until I got married, and then Larry and I lived out of state for a few years. So there okay. was a gap of maybe five years that I didn't come. Okay. And when we moved back to Minnesota, then we started, started coming, coming okay. all over again with our kids. So. Sure. So your girls grew up here the whole time. Yes, Amy and Emily grew up here the mm -hmm. whole time. Mm -hmm. And you may or may not remember that when my parents brought my sister and I up here, we started with two weeks, but then we extended it to a month. Okay. So we would come for the whole month of July. My dad would only have two weeks vacation, so he would commute mm. for two weeks. But, okay, but from my, the cities, Twin from Cities? The, from the cities, right. But my mom and my sister and I would just stay. Did you always have the end cabin? We've stayed in every single cabin. Have you? But we ended up in the end cabin for the, the last umpteen years. Okay. That, for some reason, that became the one. Okay. I don't know why, but yeah. my mom and dad just picked that one and so that is sort of well we do get our favorites we do after a while <laughs> we do and so then when Larry and I started coming up we always stayed in the end yeah, cabin, cabin. It yeah. just, that's the way yeah. it ended up and you had the little blue boat we had that little blue sailboat yes yes I always yes. remember and I remember you and your sister out in that little that was before we got it yes that's and I right. remember that little blue boat and you guys would always be out there in yes it. yes well, I don't know I don't remember if you were sailing or rowing both it did both yeah well and I have a story about that oh. which it's a good story a good Trout Lake story um, when I was a teenager, do you remember first, uh, the Belias? What was no. the um, I think they were in this cabin. Okay. Either this one or this one. Anyway, they had a daughter my age. So she and I became friends because we were always up here at the same time. Okay. All right. So one beautiful afternoon, she and I took the little blue sailboat out. And we were halfway across Trout sailing. And one of those quick afternoon thunderstorms mm. came up, just out of nowhere, just came. Now, I know what I'm doing, so I say to Chris, I say, don't worry, we're going to let the sail down, number one, mm -hmm. and we're going to get to shore as quickly as we can. So I mm -hmm. let the sail down, and we, we rode, and the wind by that time was howling. We ended up on the almost on the point over there by Knutson's. Oh, okay. Okay. Now we're fine. Nothing happened. We're fine. However, my mom and dad, being where they and Dan, they're on the shore here having friggin' heart attacks because they think we've drowned. I mean, now uh, they can't see the boat because I let the sail down. Okay. So they can't see us. They don't know where we are. We No cell phones back in those sure. days. Sure. So they're getting all the people on the resort here to get their boats and <gasps> go find go us. Go look for you. Go look for us. Well, the storm blew over very quickly. Okay. It really, it, it was here and gone in maybe half an hour or okay. less. Okay. So I was I was then able to start rowing back here. Okay. By that time, my mom and dad saw us, and we were fine. 
but you you would have thought we we had done something <laughs> terrible. You know, it was just you know how parents are. Yes, and so they panicked. Yes, yes. And I understand that. But I kept wanting to say, Mom and Dad, I know what I'm doing. Yeah. I, I put the sail down. Yeah. I got us to shore. Yeah. yeah. But it it was funny and that was sort of a story that circulated for the for next a long time. few years. Sure. Out there. Sure. Do you remember that day that Julie took the little sailboat out? <laughs> Absolutely. So, so I'll never forget that little boat. Oh, I know. And yeah. I don't know if it's down there now. I have to ask Mom. I, don't I know. think it's gone now. Could be. Could be. It's so sad because I remember Janet and Kathy in that little boat and they kept doing circles. Circles? You know? Yes. It circled so nicely. It, you know? it did. It was such a funny little thing. And my dad bought it for Marge and I, for my sister and I. Just, yeah. That we could have this little boat and we could learn how to sail in it. Yeah, it was perfect. It, was perfect. it had the high sides. Yes. You were always safe. Safe, exactly. I don't know that the thing could have tipped over, to be honest. I don't, it was we so never tipped it over. It was I know. so seaworthy. Yeah. It was, yeah. it was. So that's one of my stories. Oh, look at your puppy. He got a bone from somewhere. What a fine. He got a treat. <laughs> Got a tree. Well, that's cool, Julie. So that's Thank story, you. Yeah. Do you remember any Gus Sequist stories? Do you remember anything about him? You know, Janet, my sister, never knew him because he passed away when she was only a year old. Wow. I so, and I was time. 13, you know, right, so right. I, I remember Grandpa, oh, you know, he used to travel down the shore here and have drinks with people oh, all in the, the time. afternoon. All, all the time. I, I, he went visiting and he'd he, have, he I think, a, a great, shot or something. Yeah, he was a great socializer. Yep. And I just, I can still hear his accent in my head. I can still hear it and Ruth. I can. Do you know, I never knew my grandparents had an accent until oh, I yeah. went to college it's, because I grew up with it. And so it was oh, just who they sure. were. Exactly. And then yes. I brought friends home from college and they go, they have, your grandma has such a nice accent. And I Ex go, accent? accent? What accent? <laughs> yeah, but for those of us that weren't used to it, it Ex was. Yeah, but she could never say my girlfriend's name, which was Gidget. She always, always used to say Yidget or oh, something sure, like that because sure. she couldn't say that sound, yeah, you know, yeah. but. Um, but yeah, Grandpa, you know, Janet doesn't know him, Kathy doesn't oh. really, they don't really, you know, Grandma, of course, because Grandma lived with us. Right, but, of course. Yeah, but Gus, yeah. they Gus. don't remember much. Well, yeah, I, I, re, I don't remember a lot, but um, I sure, I just remember his voice, and I remember, as you said, every afternoon he kind of made the rounds and came yeah. down to the beach, and, and he and, and my dad both loved to sip their drinks so okay they, they'd always have a couple together okay and, um yeah he was delightful i think he came down in the afternoon i think mm -hmm. he would work a little bit in the morning yes. eat lunch take his nap yep. and then i think then he traveled the resort to visit with people. social hour yes, yes. yeah I think so yep yep and grandma see now i'm not jerky and gust and and my mom and dad i mean they, they were some partiers up here. <laughs> so I think there probably there were. were. And and as when you're a little kid, you don't pay much attention. But it was like almost every night there was a group down by the where the fire pit used to be. Okay. I don't know if it's still down there. Yeah. But Marielle and they'd all have their drinks in their hand, and then us kids would just play up and down the beach while all the grown-ups would be. Okay. Had their social hour, and sometimes it was after dinner. Okay. Sometimes it was during dinner where everybody ate together. Okay. Um, but Gus was definitely a part of that all whole of all that whole scene. Yeah. Yeah, isn't that something? And Mariella for sure. I mean, Mariella became very close with my mom and dad. Did she? Okay. Very close. And um, my this is interesting. My mother never drove. Okay. Never had a driver's license. Never drove. So, okay. So we'd come up here for a month, no car. Oh sure. Put on this. Oh thing. my goodness. And I, I just remember being the top of the pyramid and. We didn't fall, and we went around the whole bay back there. <gasps> oh, my so goodness. So there's a story for you. Oh, my goodness. A water ski show. <laughs> <laughs> so for free. For free, yes, yes. Oh.